In this video, we'll see how to create a stored procedure that uses a cursor to insert records into a table. Specifically in this example, we're going to be looking at the availability of our counselors in our family counseling practice. Let's take a look at their schedule data. So here are the appointments that they have scheduled for a particular day in June of 2016. So we can see we have 32 appointments here. And let's take a look at that information graphically. In prior examples, we've written queries to look at this data from the appointment table. And these are not the simplest queries to write. Uh, they have a start time and they have a duration. But writing queries to find when different appointments might overlap with other appointments is fairly difficult but doable. Now what's even more difficult is to try to ask questions about the data that's not in the table. Ask questions about the gaps between the appointments. And that's really one of the most interesting pieces of information about the system that we're working on because we'll need to know when different counselors are available. And that's only represented by the fact that they're not scheduled. And so in this example, we're going to create a stored procedure that looks across all of this appointment data, determines what the gaps are, and then formulates insert statements to create a table that shows what the availability is and makes that visible so that we can query against it. And so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is set my server output on. And I want to make sure that I say format wrapped here at the end of that statement because I'll be using spaces, leading spaces, to be able to line up my output so that it's a little more visually pleasing. Now we're ready to get started creating a procedure. So we'll say create or replace procedure, and we'll call it schedule. Now we'll say as. Now we're ready to define the cursor. A cursor is just an object that's going to allow me to iterate across the results of a query one record at a time and decide what to do. And so here's the syntax. We say cursor and give it a name. In this case, I'll call it date cursor because I'll just be looking at a set of dates. I then say is, and then I give it the query that produces the records that I want to iterate across. So with that query defined, I'm ready to begin the work of the procedure. Now, to iterate across this loop, I'm going to use a for to iterate across this cursor, I'm going to use a for loop. So I'll start with a keyword for, and now I have to give an identifier that I will use to refer to the record that I'm using in this cursor. And so I'll just give that a name of date record. So I'll say for date record in the cursor that I'm talking about, which is our date cursor, which was defined just above. Then I begin the loop with the keyword loop. And so now I'm just going to print out the results of this query to my screen. So I'll say dbms output.putline. And now to refer to the current value in my cursor, I use the name that I gave for the individual record, date record, and then dot the value of the name of the column that I have in the data set that is in the cursor. And so that should display out one at a time the values that were in that query that we ran. And so I put end loop, I'm ready to end the procedure, and I'm ready to execute the create procedure statement. Now to execute that, to run that procedure, I'm just going to use the exec statement with the name of the procedure schedule, and we'll see that that runs and displays the dates that we have for the appointments in our table. So now let's do something a little bit more complex. We'll go ahead and create our procedure again, but this time we're going to start off with a variable. So we'll create a variable called start date. We'll use this variable to hold the value of one of these records, one of the dates from our initial query. We'll also create a variable to keep track of a particular counselor because we're going to now introduce counselors that we have scheduled on those individual dates. I'm going to go ahead and build my date cursor again, the way that we did before. But I'm also going to create another cursor to deal with 
information about the counselors. And so this one I will define as a different query. In this case, I'm just going to select the names of the counselors from the appointment table, where the start time in that appointment table is equal to the current start time that I'm examining from my other cursor. So I'm actually going to nest one cursor inside the other. And so I'll need to bind my variable start date onto the value that I'm currently interested in, and that will then become the date that is relevant for this second query. And so we're ready to begin the work of this procedure. So we'll go ahead and open up our date cursor just as we did before. And now we'll establish the value of the start date variable to be read from that cursor. So before we print it out, we're just going to take the value from the cursor of the start date column and put it into our the start date variable. And I'll go ahead and print that out to the screen again as well. Now I'm going to make a, another loop inside that for loop that is going to be open on the counselor cursor. And so now that our B start date has a value, when we use that B start date here in our in the cursor for our counselor information, it will restrict that information to just the particular date that we're currently working on. So now inside this loop, we will assign the name of the counselor, or the variable counselor name, to the value from the cursor. And we'll print out now the name of the counselor as well. But we want it to be indented from the dates that we're working with. And so I'll first just put a few spaces, a string with some spaces in, and then I will concatenate on that variable. I'll end the loop for the counselor cursor, and then I'll end the loop for the date cursor. Now I'm ready to end the procedure and execute the create procedure statement. Now let's take a look at running this procedure. So now we can see that it has still printed off the dates that we're interested in, but it has also printed off the names of the counselors that are scheduled on each of those dates. And so this was accomplished by having a cursor nested inside of a cursor. We need to do one more level of nesting to be able to get to the individual appointments for each one of these counselors. So let's take a look. We'll go ahead and start again the way that we have before. But we'll need a couple of more variables. And so this time, I'm going to need a variable to keep track of when the breaks in between the appointments start. And that will be a date type. I will also need a variable to keep track of how long those breaks are. And we'll establish the cursors as we did in the last version. So here we have the cursor for the date. And here we have the cursor for the counselor. Now we're going to set up a cursor for the appointments. So we'll give it a name as we have the others. And we'll give it a query that defines it. Now we're going to select all the information out of the appointment table, but we're going to limit it. We'll select all the columns, but we'll limit the rows to be just those that are on the particular start date. And so this should give us information for the start date, and we'll restrict it for the counselor. And we'll go ahead and order those by the start time. So the results of this query should give us all the appointments for a particular counselor on a particular date. And now we're ready to start the work for this. Again, we'll iterate across the first two cursors. And now inside this counselor cursor, we're going to begin by saying we need to identify when the break starts. So if we think about it, this break here that we don't have any information about, we need to be able to start that at 9 a.m. And so we're going to say every day the earliest break is going to start at 9 a.m. And so that's what we have to define right here. 
And so to do that, we are just going to say that that is going to be our start date, the start date that we read off of we read off of our first cursor, so the start date that we're working with, and then I'm going to add on to it nine hours. So it's, that start date is going to begin at midnight, and so I'm going to plus nine times one divided by 24, because remember when we do date arithmetic in Oracle, it's always days, and so I have to add on nine hour size portions of a day. Now we're going to establish the counselor as the current counselor that we're looking at. And we'll go ahead and print out the counselor's name as we did in the prior version of this procedure. Now we're ready to start the loop for each appointment. So for each appointment record, we now have to calculate the number of minutes between the start date that we just between where the break starts that we just calculated and the next appointment. So if we think about that by looking at our data, if I'm looking at this break right here, it's going to start at 9 a.m. and I have to calculate that duration until I bump into the next appointment. And so to do that, I'm going to say my variable break duration is going to be equal to the start time of the appointment that I'm currently looking at minus the break start time or minus that 9 o'clock. And that will give me the interval between when that break starts and when the next appointment starts. And I need to scale that down to minutes. And so multiply that by 24 and by 60. Give me the number of minutes in a day. All right, now I'm ready to print that information out. So I'll just print out a label that says the break starts at, and then I'll put the, my variable break start. I'll put the break length and the break length, a label for the next appointment, and when the next appointment starts, a label for the appointment's length, and, when the, uh, and the, the appointment's length itself. And then that should give me a nice block that shows the information that I need for that item. Now I need to set the next break start time. So we've got our break start time beginning here at 9 o'clock. But now my next break time, my next break start time has to start at the end of the current appointment that I'm looking at. And so to do that, I will just say that my break start is equal to where this appointment starts plus the duration of that appointment scaled to minutes. And so that should set up the next break start for the next time through the loop. So I'm ready to end the loop for each of my cursors, end the stored procedure, and create that stored procedure. Now if I execute that stored procedure, we can see the individual information for all of these appointments and with the breaks that we've identified so far. So let's go ahead and come up here and take a look at June 2nd. And we'll compare that to our visual representation. So here we can see that we have the first break that starts for Abigail Smith, starts at 9 a.m., and that break is zero minutes long. Well, that makes sense because she has an appointment right there at 9 o'clock. But then she has another break, even though it's just a tiny break here, when that appointment ends at 9.55 until 10, and we see that as the next break right here. She's got a five-minute break there, and she has a 65-minute break that begins at 11.55. That's right here. So if we look at James Sawyer, we'll see that he doesn't have an appointment starting right at 9 o'clock, and so his first break should start at 9 o'clock, and it's not zero minutes, it's 30 minutes, and that's right because his first appointment doesn't start until 9.30. And so we've done a pretty good job of identifying the information that we have here. We're missing one piece of information, and that is the duration of the very last break. So if I look at Abigail Smith here, the last break I see here is one that starts at 1.55 and is just five minutes long. So we're missing the information about this last gap up here until 5 o'clock. And so we'll have to make a modification to be able to pick that up, and that will be the source of the next video.